Hey everyone, as I'm recording this, it's been, what, 18 hours, 16 hours, something like that since the patch dropped. And we've had a little bit more time to kind of mull over the balance changes, but uh, unlike often when you go for this and the balance patch drops and he's like, oh, let's give me a, my initial opinions. I wanted to play a couple games, talk to some people, figure out exactly how I felt about things uh, before I really dove into this patch. So I've had the time played a couple games I have some opinions some opinions have changed some really haven't but let's dive in to Stormgate's 0.1 patch the balance patch changes some other things the game looks a lot prettier now and uh let's dive in so uh, again this is a big patch I'm not going to cover everything there's way too much we're going to talk about the stuff that I care about and we're going to talk about uh one big thing by the way that has happened we're on I guess technically 0.1 1.5 now or something I'm not exactly sure how they're they're marking it but anyways uh there was one big bug before we get into this that has been fixed it used to be because they added custom hotkey modifiers uh if you hold down if you held down control and you move your mouse button you actually and you try to drag scroll or something it just wouldn't work so they fixed that late last night uh really did a good job staying up late just to make sure that this would work possibly but anyways uh work well uh but okay so first of all this is the first big balance or a big content patch and yes it does have a balance patch it has a lot more than that there's this new hero castiel um who i believe uh, as my girlfriend in the background is probably gonna be uh, excited about i believe what that's a um super that's a supernatural character uh obviously this big man with the shield and the sword is not uh, from supernatural but anyways uh going for that one um so big things here right it looks a lot better the game is a lot prettier we'll go into that in a second uh you can now use customizable hotkey modifiers i didn't understand i didn't know that this was such a big deal for people i just use control alt shift like as standard but it does matter for a lot of people but yeah let's just talk yeah there we go we have this stuff so there's a lot of new stuff here I i'm not going to talk about the co-op stuff all that often it's not something i i care about too much uh someone who cares about co-op more than i do will probably go into this more but here's the big thing right first of all Jagged Maw is gone. Jagged Maw is gone. That's very, very exciting. I think for a lot of people now, and, and Isle of Dread as well. We'll take a look at this in a second, but Isle of Dread is just better. So they really have solved a couple problems. But uh, instead, they said, hey, we're going to have Furious Resolve. We're going to have this new map. It's going to be effectively Fighting Spirit. It's actually, I've played a couple games on it. It's very small for how much of a macro map it is, right? You get three bases, but getting that fourth base is not easy. At the very least, though, there are three Therium camps. So if you're an Infernal player, you have access to triple Therium on your core three. That actually, even if you do have to build an extra shrine for it, that does make you much, much happier. So anyways, uh, we do have Furious Resolve. Uh, we're going to remains to be seen just how good or just how not good it is. But for now, I'm I'm plenty happy. Also, the game is... Okay, let's zoom in this a little bit. Uh, compositionally, you know, there we go. All right, that's a little bit better. Um... Anyways, the game is much, much prettier. The game is much, much prettier here. The Honestly, these these screenshots don't do it justice. We can see this right here. It's like, oh, it's really good, but I'm going to go and I'm going to splice in some footage of the game actually as it looks, you know, a low versus ultra, but an ultra, it, it really does look much, much prettier, uh, which I think makes people very happy. Again, Amara, no, don't really care. Hus customizable hotkey modifiers. Uh, I saw Sal streaming yesterday. I, I saw some other people streaming yesterday. They were very happy about this. I don't use custom. I didn't use uh, custom hotkeys like that all that much in StarCraft 2, so it doesn't really impact me. But for those that it does impact, very excited that it, that it helps you out as much as it did. So there is that. Um, very, you know, again, and uh, it did introduce one bug that has already been fixed. Also, push pathing is nice. It doesn't. It doesn't fix everything. I've definitely noticed uh, my units kind of getting clumped up around the edges of building concave still. That's not perfect. Uh, definitely notice sometimes they kind of get stuck on some terrain. It, it does continue to improve. Uh, and they've already said this. They said, hey, um, maybe this was earlier, but they said, hey, you know, we are actively working on improving our pathfinding. It's not there yet. It is. We, it's not where we want it to be yet, but we are making improvements. Hey, here, here's what we've done. Also, Weaver's not being able to walk over things is nice. It, uh, I guess effectively they, they phase movement over friendly units. And it makes Weavers a lot better to use. That and a balance patch we're going to talk about later on. Also, as a caster, I'm so excited about this. Oh, man, they've invalidated my competitive... Uh, they've invalidated my competitive advantage. You know, I I was the one. I built an overlay that had scores and game times and map names. And they're like, yeah, actually, we're going to build it in now. Frost Giant. 
but no, I, I, this is actually very exciting and it looks very good too. I mean, of course it would, right? Ryan Shooter, the guy who made Game Heart, is on the team. So we knew this was going to get there eventually. Of course, we are still missing production tabs. Of course, we're still missing any sort of information like that. But this is making life a lot. <laughs> I love, by the way, that we have uh, a cult fiction, a fresh giant team member, just styling. He's like, look at me. I've got better macro than the peaceful bot. Uh, but anyways, um, as we're sitting here, it just looks a lot better. Right? This, that, is, that is very, very exciting. Also, oh man, I wish they had like two more of these. I would love to run like a little silly tournament of three series. You know, if there were three maps, you could run best of threes on these kind of hunky maps or, you know, having some sort of custom map modifier like StarCraft did uh, where you could go and just apply the zombie mode to everything. But, you know, obviously that's not there. I haven't played around with it actually, but it does seem kind of fun and I'm excited for, for interesting or weird modes. And uh, yeah, that's all I got to say about that one. But okay, patch notes co-op, we're skipping by because honestly, I don't really care. I'm so happy for people that do care, um, but I'm not a big co-op guy. I'm much more about everything else. Campaign, you know, Mar Mars model's been upgraded, but uh, they haven't done that for the uh, for the pre-made cutscenes just yet. But okay, yeah, this is where it matters, right? This is, we're getting into Versa. This is where we're getting into the actual balance patches that really we should care about. So they've introduced Furious Resolve. It is. It gives you core three, four bases. Fourth base is really hard to take. Uh, but of course, maps mine out slower. Bases mine out slower in Stormgate than they do in, in say, Starcraft uh, Legacy of the Void. So you're less sad. And because there are three Therium, it actually is is pretty dang playable. Um, now the middle map can be interesting. I, I don't. I don't have really strong opinions on it. I think I'm gonna have to play more games to properly figure that out. But at first glance, I like it. It is a little bit different, but it's still very viable. Also, Isle of Dread does no, lo no longer has two entrances to the main base. It's playable now. <laughs> it is. Also, Nearest Expo is a little closer as well. It's super playable. Uh, it's much more playable. It makes me very, very happy. Also, uh, they don't have this one in and uh, Actually, you know, we can just open up Stormgate and, and take a look. They don't have this um, this built in, but Broken Crown, the, the health camp on Broken Crown is slightly further away, I think, from the third base, uh, from the low ground third base than it used to be. So that means that these kind of uh, Lancer pushes that we used to see Vanguard players go for, uh, say, Vector pushes or something, are going to be just a little bit less effective. Just a little bit less effective. And also, Double Therium, really important there. That map was very hard to get enough Therium on because there's just nothing on the natural. So yes, you have to spend a Shrine for it if you're an Infernal player, but it is much more accessible. So... Very, very pleased with those. Again, you know, it's spooky, spooky boner. We talked about it. Uh, audio has, yeah, it's changed across the board. It's not where it needs to be just yet. It's not where it needs to be. Uh, but it is it is a lot better. The exos in particular. Uh, actually, exo sounds sound a lot, lot better. The health camp used to be like right here, and now it's right here. So it is just a little bit further away, which takes a little bit more power out of the out of everything. Not the end of the world, certainly not, but it is something that is manageable that does take a little bit of, a little bit of power out and this was just kind of this change that they was not included in the in the test or that was not included in the in the balance changes but it is there so anyway that's worth talking about and we're back all right also again all maps uh and all modes look a lot prettier yeah we talked about that one i it's funny I, so the other this smart attack thing which means that if you if you right click and then left if you right if you right click somewhere and then left click while do while holding it uh, it, it issues an attack move. It theoretically makes stutter step a little bit easier. Uh, I know I, I saw some people talking about how they weren't sure how this was going to feel in like competitive modes, whether it was a little bit too strong. But as it stands, I don't really have an issue with it. I think it, it's totally fine. Uh, maybe it is going to be a little bit too strong. Maybe I just haven't been playing with it enough, but I don't think it's that it really just If you're trying to play with mouse only or something, it's a little bit, maybe a little bit easier. Um, but again, this is the big change. This is a big change as well. Weavers can walk over units and they're going to be faster, which makes them a lot more viable. And uh, this push priority stuff actually does help out quite a bit. Not perfect. Not everything has been solved, but it does help out quite a bit. Um, also, thank you. Tooltips kind of work a little bit. Tooltips are still a little bug. Like if a, if an XO promotes, it's going to say it's got 182 out of 130 HP, things like that. So they're not perfect. Uh, it's not totally fixed. Uh, but at least now that you see, can, you can see like bonus damage versus light, things like that, which is really what was really lacking. It's like, I want to know. I don't want to know that something does 
significantly more damage i want to know that it does plus 15 versus light or plus four versus light for the hornets now for example that's important information um across the board so they fixed that one um bugs have been fixed this is a big thing right you know you can actually go and you and chain queue instead of having to go back to the main menu go to versus select your race again go over that uh go with that but yes okay so now we're actually talking about the balance notes not anything else the balance patches and i i think on a whole i like the balance changes on a whole i think the game is moving in a positive direction uh there are a couple things that i'm not as much of a fan of and we'll talk about those as we get to them but making tech up a little bit faster is nice i've noticed by the way a lot of vanguard players are using this and the buffs they gave to vulcans uh to try to go for these vulcan ideas uh, like Vulcan med tech timing I'm just like yeah weavers are better easy games easy games it's great um but okay so you can upgrade a little bit faster now you can get to tier two a little bit faster that helps out Vanguard quite a bit it's also potentially really good for Infernal versus Infernal I played Floophead last night who was really rushing that I didn't think it was very good but you know he I, I didn't my conceptualization of the idea was that it wasn't very good but he kind of smacked me with it so you know uh all trees are now light which means that it takes less shots to knock trees down it means it's a little bit easier that that means that more forest can clear through trees a little bit easier which is uh it's just a really a quality of life change for for celestials more than anything else uh but creep camps uh, this is noticeable creep camps you can no longer take it with like your first unit lancers can no longer solo the health camp for example uh you can't take with like a single brute and a hexen if you're playing uh playing infernals it's technically it's a buff to uh arc ship builds or uh arc station builds because it you know you can go and um you can go and raise things up to heaven you can go kind of get those free takes a lead you take at the same speed but it's faster compared to the other factions like technically that's a bit of a buff i don't know that it is all that big also uh so you know they're harder to take they, they do a little bit more damage uh but also where is it um yeah so Oozes and slimes actually reduce armor uh, when they die now, which actually, it, you, you do feel that. It does slow down. You kind of want to wait for the the timing, the anti-armor uh, the anti -armor ability to time off before you go somewhere else. It does make life a little bit easier. But also, uh, money is a little bit less. So with everything, with it being harder to take and with money being a little bit less, uh, I have actually, I've been playing a lot of quick expand builds and it's been working pretty well going like a, an 11 shrine, something like that. 11, 12 shrine. Still, still still figuring out the optimization on it um but going for something like an 11 12 shrine i think is actually very viable in most matchups if you're playing infernal and I, I, again i'm speaking from infernals here but if you're going like if your opponent goes like 11 10 uh vault conclave or something like that uh, in infernal the infernal mirror it's not holdable on every map if you, i don't think you can go shrine first on boneyard because the the double entry points but i think if you wall off if you go uh you know like shrine double vault on uh on say on a map that only has one entrance say for example broken crown or something i think it actually is pretty reasonable because you just get the wall off and you, you're gonna be fine so again i think that is very i think it is the the design space or the the build space has opened up a little bit which is very exciting also uh more money in the mid game so it is important you don't you don't have to be on the map early but it is very important to make sure that you get your, your stuff cleared eventually and you start to get to level two that that is worth actually a ton of money but yeah also thank goodness uh this also means that speed that the speed buff from towers is good for for one attack you know for making something happen but it's not just going to dominate the map forever which is all of these changes again are are awesome um i don't know how i feel about this one because this is uh self units can no longer capture points is that was aimed at the scanner and i, I didn't mind that that was you know you'd get a hex in and there was some counterplay you'd get a scout and there was some counterplay I know people were complaining about it. I didn't really have an issue, but I guess it does make life a little bit easier. But now Vanguard changes, which means we're getting into the point of the point of this patch where we talk about how the dogs were nerfed into the ground. Thank the Lord. <laughs> like, uh, I've seen a couple scouts. They've been built to scout. That is it. That is their job. They scout. They don't do anything else. They, you don't build 30 of them and, and not build a single other unit. There is build diversity in Vanguards again hallelujah we are oh, but anyways solar habitats habitats are now heavy instead of light which means that uh which means that you know, again you're, you're very happy about that one uh which means that they're no longer just gonna get shredded by a bunch of scouts running in also i didn't know that that was a thing i am assuming this was this was meant to be 
This was meant to be Ramparts, right? Ram Ramparts no longer autocast. I think that's what that meant to be. Or uh, like the ability will no longer autocast on Ramparts or Solar Habitats, I think, because this this uh, this line doesn't make sense to me otherwise. But anyways, so it goes. I know Mixu in particular was complaining about how Ramparts would just autocast when you built them. And that really kind of, because you want Rampart to go onto the structure that's getting targeted, or you want Rampart to go onto the turret, for example, and give it that bonus armor. But instead it was just kind of auto-casting on weird stuff and just not really, well, not very good. Not a good situation for the, for the, uh, for the Vanguard player. So anyways, uh, they also, hey, this, welcome everyone. This is our bunker. Build time decreased by 10 seconds. Uh, this actually, I think it does matter um now i may have gone a little bit too far so a lot of complaints from the vanguards were saying that okay well if we have to go build a sentry post to defend something it takes we have to auto build sure so it doesn't really take 55 seconds but it is still a significant amount of time where our economy is diminished where our economy is not happy about things and that means that so they buff this so you can actually defend things a little bit easier so your economy is not hindered as much uh with the bob change Bob's building three seconds faster. This may have been an overbuff. Uh, Vanguard economy is very fast, much, much faster now. I saw someone on the Discord making a thread about how mathematically Infernal can't win because the economy is so much better for Vanguard now, which uh, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, I think uh, I think there are going to be a lot of reactionary takes in the first 24 hours of a balance match, I, or just in general. I think that is always going to be the case. I sh hell I've had I have my my fair share of them as well so you know anything we say here grain of salt right uh again they're also making machine lab a little bit cheaper which means you can get up into into machine lab a little faster more upgrades um again these things they're just enabling that higher tier of tech just that much faster and a 50 theorem is pretty significant but also I love this so much it just means the scout they have a place in the game I think you know Again, I, I speak a lot from Infernal perspectives. I think these kind of late game transitions, Scouts versus Weavers can be, still be good. Um, I think they can still, if you're trying to go get on top of Cabals, they can be good. That late game on the hunt, which we saw once actually, uh, Nina played versus Mana and had this sick on the hunt surround on top of a bunch of savers. I think that can still be very viable, but they're no longer nearly as oppressive as they once were. And thank goodness. Their job, their job should be maybe as a kind of late game tech transition or as... Uh, a component of your army, but not the entire thing. And in exchange, they gave Lancers a bunch of buffs. Now, I'm not totally sure how they feel about this. Uh, so Lancers, 20 more HP, 10 more armor, which means that, uh, what is it? It's uh, two, uh, 260 divided by, um, what is that? Uh, 0.85, right? Yeah. So effectively, they, they have effectively 305 effective HP with the armor there. Um, which, you know, if you 240 divided by 0.95 is too, it's a lot more effective HP, but again, they don't take minus two. To, I don't know exactly how to add, to add that in, but they don't add, they don't have the damage reduced by two and eight. So they have three, they have effectively a hundred, what was it? Like 50 more EHP e with the armor, but they don't take two less damage from every source. So it makes a little bit more sense. They're still tanky, but you can actually kill them as Gaunts. Gaunts actually kill them. If you cut away, it's reasonable which is very exciting and they do but they do a little bit more damage versus light light as well so it's much more of a micro dance actually i really do like it uh it does make me very happy and, and they do have this tier three upgrade mitigative guard that gives them that minus two back so you know you get to late game they're still they do suddenly become that much more tanky but you can kill them with gaunts the the control space the micro space is opened up a lot more i really like that also thank goodness exaballs are still very strong Exaballs are still very, very strong, but they're not as bad. You know, minus effectively minus two damage versus brutes and magmadons and things uh, across 20 exos is minus 40 damage of uh, a volley. You know, that's significant. So, you know, I think probably maybe it needs to drop even more. I don't know, but it is still this is a step in the right direction. And we'll talk about some things as well in other parts of the balance patch that make that even better. Also, System Shock now on tier two. It is much slower now. It's 120 seconds. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't add that into the balance patch, but it's 120 seconds, I believe, to research. Um, I believe it's 120 seconds uh, to get mastery. But purge, the ability to boost forward, boost back, like that that uh, that stim effectively, the heavy micro ability for a second, is very strong. And I'm it's 24 hours in, but I got I'm I'm kind of surprised we're not seeing Vanguard players play around with it more. It is 
it means you can go and kind of hit these really cool flanks with with lancers and get them on top uh, of your opponent's gaunts or on top of their cabals or things like that it means you can go in and kite away it means you can disengage if the fight is bad like it is a very powerful idea it means you can get out when a nightfall infestation drops the slow which we'll talk about in a second it means you can get away from these things um, so I think that's a pretty powerful idea. I'm surprised I haven't seen more Vanguard players playing with it, but I think that'll change in time. Impact Thrusters is gone. It just now means that the dash is a stun, and it means you you kind of uh, you dash a little bit further. I think that's a good change. It was just, it took away from the power of Vulcan, but this is why we're seeing everyone go. This and the fact that uh, 10 seconds faster is Central Command. Um, I mean, this is the reason why we're seeing everyone go Vulcans, and I've been winning a lot of MMR on just building Gaunts and, and killing people. with. It's great. Please do more of this. <laughs> uh, I do think they have their place. I don't know that this is enough of a buff to Vulcans. I saw Sal trying to play them versus Vanguard uh, too early and getting a moved by Exos because these are still heavy units. So, you know, you still die. Uh, also Hornet damage. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I, I th This was... Uh, Celestial players figured it out with Cabal, but it was still way too strong. It's just way, way too strong where it was like, yeah, you know, Prisms evaporate. Uh, four Hornets would kill like any number of Scythes. It was just very, very, very good. So big change there. Uh, also, Graven's a little cheaper. I started to see some players play with Graven's towards the very end of the patch. But cutting their Ethereum cost in half feels really good. I've seen actually them used... It's it's actually kind of a cool idea. Um, I lost to HH Quanta. He was playing something like this in the late game. And I, I don't have a good answer to Vanguard late game right now. I'm working on it, but... Don't have a good answer to Vanguard late game at the moment, but I played against HH Quanton Boneyard, and he did this really cool thing where he uh, put them on. He infiltrated my like six base. This was a late game. He infiltrated my six base as he made an attack. So all of my top pair abilities disappeared. I couldn't shroud fall. I couldn't nightfall infest to slow things down. I couldn't drop a. I couldn't manifest a shroud stone for a solid minute as this fight's happening. And you know, using that animus, right? Using that top bar ability. Uh, especially in these late games, is super important as, as an Inferno player. Especially, like, again, Shroudfall means that everything's getting infested because of the, the Gaunt change that we'll talk about. It's super important. So to shut that down right before a fight was actually... I think that's going to be the big value. Yeah, killing bases, harassment, sure. But shutting down top bar abilities before a fight, I think, is actually an underutilized part of this. And I think that will be very, very useful. Also, Helicarrier, Helicarrier bombing run range decreased from 40 to 25 seconds. Um... Or 40 to 25 range. They said seconds in the patch I saw, but yeah, they're not as long, which is good. I think they should also decrease the damage. Or I don't know. Hel Helicarriers. It's, it's not actually, they don't even need to nerf the Helicarrier. They just need to give us viable anti air. Please, please. I actually, so this, by the way, moving on, I think in general, it's been busted nerfs for Vanguard. I think in general, Vanguard's in a pretty solid spot. Uh, we're going to talk about it. Celestials are the big winner of this patch, but I think Vanguard is in a, is a reasonable spot. So this change, by the way, Nightfall now slows down enemy units by 50% for three seconds is fantastic. What this means is now that there's a disengage tool. So I talked about this a lot. The problem with Infernal Armies is that you do not have the ability to disengage once you commit. Weavers are faster now, but they were slow. Magbadons are slow. Uh, Hellborn are slow. Everything you have is slow. You, commit, you, you take a fight against a Vanguard Army, you lose that fight, you lose everything. You cannot get out with anything. It makes the game very binary. That is not good RTS design. So I talked to, you know, I talked to Monk about this actually quite a bit. I said, you know, there are a bunch of different options. You can, it might be make it a top bar, make it part of uh, Miasma's, a I don't know. Uh, but he said, this was what he settled on. He said, okay, Infest now slows for the, Infest now slows. Every 60 seconds, you have this small AOE that you can drop down and behind, in front of your army, you slow everything down and it is a disengaged duel and it makes a, Big, big difference. Also, it's every 60 seconds instead of 90. It means that you can actually go and lose stuff. Absolutely. I like no one's saying that if you lose a fight, you shouldn't lose stuff. But it does mean that you don't lose everything. And that is actually such a big change. And, that, you know, they're also trying to go and make sure that uh, tier three tech structures are more viable. So we see this across the board. Uh, Shadow clefts are cheaper. Um, something for Celestials is cheaper. We'll talk about it. I forget exactly what it is. Machine Lab is cheaper. Uh, just again, enabling those higher tier upgrades uh, is just making that a little bit more viable. So the Brute was changed a lot as well. So Sundering Soul has been removed. Now when they split, they gain 50% bonus movement speed for like 20 seconds after they split, something like that. So they do move a little bit faster. Um, and also, 
You can get Hellforge at tier one. I, I don't know that we saw that, but Hellforge at tier one, and you can get Sundering Soul um, or Soulforge Descendants immediately at tier one. So I've been playing around. Uh, yeah, there we go. No longer creates a greater shrine. Re uh, researched immediately. It does take longer, but you can get it at right around six minutes. You can get it like 536 minutes, which is not super fast, but it's reasonably fast. And I have been, I've been playing around with that, like going uh, shrine three volts. Hellforge, uh, and going pretty light on Therium while you take three bases and then cranking Therium up later. It feels, I don't have it optimized. It does feel reasonable. Uh, just going, because again, this brute change going into a bunch of fiends, you can catch things on the map. It, it feels pretty reasonable. I, I don't know exactly if it's going to be good enough, but it feels fairly reasonable. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I think, I think this actually, I think brutes are a much better unit now just because the fiend changes. Uh, they're still a little bulky and also with the path engine, they're still a little bulky they still they still fall off say once like exos are on the field or against enough argents by themselves but i think they're a better unit and i think there's there's some interesting builds that don't just rely on gaunts that are going to be a little bit more viable i'm still figuring it out i'm not sure um but we'll figure it out gaunts though i hate this change not this this is fine a little bonus damage versus light they, they clear creep camps a little bit better this makes zero sense so now the way they've changed it, uh, plague axis, which that's the tier one upgrade. You you need the chat, you need the uh, you need the ritual chamber for that. You, it's, it's the first upgrade to make sure to get Reaper's Rush to go twenty percent faster eventually. Now it only applies infest if the target's on shroud, which means that you can only apply infest if you drop an effigy in front of your army, dies immediately. You maybe get what you get, you get one volley off, maybe. If they are pushing deep onto your creep, so you're turtling, you're playing defensively or there's Shroudfall, or there's Arbinger, like you're playing deep into your tech tree. It, it means that this tier one upgrade, or this first level of upgrade is not very good at all. It's kind of pointless. It's just not very good. And on top of that, it means IVI is weird. It's like, if I am fighting the mascot army in Infernal Infernal, I'm dropping an effigy on my opponent, which means they're healing, which means they're going and actually actively healing white health, especially because, you know, it's tier two, right? They're they're going to have a greater shrine. It means they're, they're regening 3% of their white health per second. It's the weirdest. It makes zero sense. It does not make sense from a gameplay perspective. Because you're supposed to be more powerful on, on Shroud. It does not make sense from a, a game. Well, from, I guess, from a game design perspective, from a gameplay perspective. It's just a bad change. It really is just a bad change. Now, if it was like, now, if it was Gaunts have to be on Shroud to imply invest. Sure. Fine. Understandable. Makes sense. I understand that. That's something I can play around. It's not too strong. It is a nerf. You have to spend Animus or you have to spend other resources to get that Shroud down. Fine. But this change is not it. This change is not it. I do not like this change. I think that this should get changed and I hope it will. Moving on to the Magmadon though. Uh, this means uptime is now at like 30% instead of 70% in terms of stun. It, be, it means that just Magmadons are not quite as strong. It's still there. Certainly does uh, it certainly does damage. Certainly does the stun. You can certainly still make things happen. But you have a little bit like it's not not to this point where it was where all Magmadons get on top of your of your army. It's like, OK, I just don't get to do anything uh, until they're dead. So that is a little bit more reasonable, a little bit better. Uh, just quality of life change. I the, the, they just remove the backswing, nerf the backswing on, swing on the Hellborn. That's the change that needs to happen. Retar retargeting, which you, you should be targeting. Fire. Theoretically, you should be target firing with your Hellborn, but it is such anti micro. Because it takes like a solid second for it to swing back and go forward where, yes, I should be targeting the units that are the light units, the small, the not the light units, but the small units that take the splash damage. Like I, I should be targeting those, but I don't want to because when I retarget, it all goes bad. It takes like three seconds to get another shot off. It's horrible. So please just reduce the backswing. That's all I, that, give me, give me the opportunity to animation cancel something, something. Because otherwise, Hellborn doing anything with them is anti-micro right now. But the changes are, are pretty nice. So uh, they can walk over units. That's been re-added. It means they're no longer nearly as bulky. They're uh, they're also a little bit faster. So these two changes mean that the Shroud Walk is still there. Absolutely still there. And the max speed is still four. But they gave some of that power and they gave it off off Shroud. And this, I like where the, I really like where the Weaver is now. It's not fast. It's still this slow plodding, uh, you know, Lovecraftian horror. But it, you can act, it can actually join your army, can actually fight. It's not just impossible to use. It's actually super, it, it's actually really nice. I'm a, I am a big fan of this change. I think this makes the Weaver not overpowered, but solid. Good against some compositions. Uh, and also, um, Weaver drops. They're a thing, guys. 
They're th they're absolutely a thing. They also gig and if uh, gig and nerf miasma. So this changes across the board. Channeling abilities have cooldowns, which just makes sense. <laughs> it's one of those things where last patch you would go and you'd get a magma a bunch of magmadons or yeah, magmadons were like the only stun I think in the game at that point realistically, uh, unless I'm forgetting something. Uh, but you would just you would get magmadons on top of of these channeling units and they would just okay stun's done dropping the spell again that didn't make any sense you, you weren't really being rewarded for canceling the canceling the spell so this time there's that cooldown that is uh, that just makes life a lot easier and they've also you know nerfed nerfed energy which i think is a little too i don't think miasma was too strong miasma had a timing i don't think miasma was was too strong but they they did nerf it in that way as well we'll see we'll see if this is just too much of a nerf but this change from a design perspective is a really good change now Maybe the cooldown's too long. I, I don't know. Whatever. Maybe the cooldown should be five seconds, but start from the time the channeling is canceled. I don't know. But this is a really good first step. Also, I've been playing around with this. This is a. Uh, I, I like this a lot. So this was an upgrade that existed last patch. No one was really using it. It was way fire up the tech tree. But now with Shadow Clef being cheaper and uh, increasing shroud coverage by quite a bit, this actually feels really good. I've been playing around with getting a couple harbingers. I mean, they're 150 there, and they are very expensive. Uh, but I've been playing around with getting a couple of these late game to get just to slam down and allow me to engage these uh, late game celestial armies. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect solution, but it is. And I was kind of ahead in the games. I was messing around with it. But I think this is actually going to be a thing, especially if you put a couple magmadons on top of it or something. It just really mess with things. I think it's viable. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, or maybe, you know, a couple weavers as well. It's also made uh, Spriggans much cheaper in theory, which is a big deal when we talk about Infernals because you're so Therium starved. It's funny though, I made them against a bunch of Helicarriers last night because technically eight uh, Spriggans fire three shots. So technically it's 18 damage per uh, volley against Helicarriers. Technically they counter Helic, they don't. They still get shredded by Helicarriers. It's not good. I think if you if you go like Shadow Flyer and Spriggan, it's gonna be fine. And I just was building Spriggans. So anyway, anyway, you know, Remains to be seen. I know people have been having a lot of success with Spriggans versus Celestials, which makes a lot of sense. I, have to, I haven't played around with that, but uh, it does make a lot of sense. So, in general, I think Infernals, uh, I think their mid game is solid. I think Weavers are much better. I think late game is going to need a 0.1 patch, 0.0.1 patch or something. I think it does need some help. And I hate that Shroud change. That Shroud change with with Scout, with uh, Gaunts is just bad. It's just not a good change. Um, it's just not it's just a bad change but i think in general i think mid game is solid um i think you can certainly do some greedy things uh late game kind of sucks though there are no 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 great late game answers for the helicarriers even still uh um saber animancer is still very very strong no no great answer for the for the for the sides as well so i i'm cautiously optimistic but i do think late game infernals do feel like they're on a bit of a timer right now Moving on to Celestials, though. Uh, Sovereign's Watch actually does the damage it's supposed to. And they prioritize enemy units over creeps, which are both great changes, although you can mess with the creeping a little bit. Sovereign's Watch on the natural, you know, like your opponent goes and tries to creep. Uh, you can put it, you can put your early game unit in, soak a little bit of damage, make, make it so they take less of those creeps, but creeps matter less, so don't know how, how worth it. I uh, don't know totally how worth it is. Also, this just makes sense. I... Uh, I did not realize it dispelled everything previously. I thought I, I, this is how I assumed it worked. Now this is actually how it works. So good change. Just makes sense, right? It doesn't make sense that Purify would dispel friendly buffs and enemy debuffs or debuffs on enemies and buffs on friends. That just doesn't make any sense. So glad they changed that one. I, it's a bug. They fixed the bug. Always love bug fixes. Arc ship a little bit cheaper now. Uh, this is splitting the difference. There was a bug previously where arc ships were uh, much, much cheaper if you build them out of, of a morph core. That is no longer that they fixed that, but it was a little bit too much of a fix. So they're like, okay, arc ships are just a little bit cheaper now, which is fine. It just makes a lot of sense. Uh, also, collection arrays and prisms. Now, su supply just makes a little bit more sense. A fully maxed out, uh, fully maxed out Luminite setup with four prisms and a collection array is still the same amount of supply. But, you know, this just means that it, it is a little bit easier to read Celestial Supply, it is more than anything else. They buffed. They buffed Aeon Gate. I still have not seen anyone use it. I, sure, you know this may. I think this is gonna. I think they're gonna keep buffing this to the point where it is just giga broken. Because right now, okay, so it's a 20 second build time. 
a little bit you know it's not quite nice network level but every unit that pops out of it is stealth like this has the chance to be very strong i just have not seen a single person use it but we don't it's not like you really need tier three for for celestials right it's like ah yes animancer saber and you're fine also making uh just making up this has been the trend making making higher tier tech a little more accessible so 50 ethereum cheaper and now it requires uh star forge or legion hall so this one actually you do have to get tier two uh is the big thing um but you well no you can get star forge so you yeah you can get this on tier one but it no yeah so you can get this on tier one but most of the upgrades still require tier two fair enough uh, remember, Ascension Matrix means that units around it do, was it 10% bonus damage if it's surged? So that is something we might see players play around with. I don't know, possibly. And this is another unit that was very heavily reworked. So Argents now, they are better at creeping. They're better at poking. If you talk, to, it depends on who you talk to. Nina's going to say that this is a big buff. This is a significant buff to Argents. This is, uh, now you can go, you can take a fight. Kill off a couple units and back up 20 seconds later, they're back up to full energy. They're able to take the fight again. But effectively, the way it works is they no longer region in combat, but you go out of combat for, it's like, I think three seconds is what Monk told me. For a couple seconds, if you're not fighting, all of a sudden you're just bumping up your energy very quickly. And it works out a lot better. So, you know, less max energy, but you're able to get more of it. It's much more of a skirmishing unit now, which I do like. Also, uh, long shot mod. Argents are going to have nine range when they have when they're fighting with energy, which is the only time you want to fight anyways. Argents are going to have nine range. They're going to poke from a they poke from a distance once long shots up. Also, you you can get back up to fifty fairly quickly, right? Guardian Nexus, you can get that on tier one. That's, that's not a big deal. Um, I have see, so Kree don't do as much damage, but our tank here, I do like that. They really was it, well, Celestials were kind of missing a front line unit. unit. Now, I you can get out Kree pretty early, and with how fast they are with roll up, I've played a couple Celestials that are just going for that and kind of taking the map, and it, it does feel a little hard because they're just so much you can't chase them. The only unit as an Inferno you can chase them with is our uh, our fiends, and they just the fiends evaporate. So it does feel it gives a lot of map control. I think roll up should be a little slower. I don't know. Um, I'm not totally sure how I feel about that one, but. Yeah, tank for damage, I do like. I, I think this gives Celestial something they were lacking. It really, the problem with Celestial's last patch was like their late game was good, the early game was reasonable, but that transition point, once say Eternal Player's Magmanon's out or enough X's are out or something, um, that was really hard. And now, again, Celestials were much better than Vanguard because of the Cabal timings, but again, this we're talking about mid game here, not not the early game stuff. Uh, Vectors is bugs fixed. You know, um, you would get the upgrade and it would just be really bad so it seems like this is fixed uh so like you would go um i'm hoping that was fixed so it used to be uh, you couldn't recall properly it was so i forget it. it was really weird um but saber you can get them now without an ascension matrix they are now faster now the the, the speed boost is the same speed but they're now just a little bit faster they're more viable uh you can get them faster into the game they're still very strong they were remember their splash damage was increased in that perpendicular line from the where the damage came from so they're, they're they're really strong. It feels weird, you know. You dive on top of them with a bunch of fiends, which feels like it should be the answer, you know, the siege tank paradigm, and just everything dies. Ugh. Go down here as well. I think also they should remove uh, remove the slow on dark prophecy. You have cabals for that. Come on, it, it, it makes it very. Or maybe re if you're gonna have the slow, reduce the range or something. As it stands, just, oh. also at archangels are much better. Than this makes sense, by the way. Every AOE can kill trees, so it didn't make sense that meteor strike couldn't. Now it can. Um, also. Avatar means that you can't be put. This is actually a really nice counterplay to, to Magmadon. It's not that you needed them. I think Saber's already, like, there were already enough Magmadon counters in the current state of things. But anyway, this is an another one that's kind of cool. Um, and just a bunch of buffs. This also makes a lot of sense. It Effectively, the way it previously worked was you got this bonus HP, and then when Ma our Avatar state ended, you would lose it. So it would be like you just get take 400 damage off the top immediately, and they would just... Sometimes we would just kill an Archangel. Now, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. So instead, it, it works as a heal. I think this might be too strong. I don't know. But it, it does make a lot more sense. And yeah, uh, Archangel are, are not small. Also, we got a shout out. We got a shout out from Stormgate Nexus. I love that one. I, I think we did a great job. I'm very happy with the work that we did. So very happy with that one. Um, Monk does provide a little bit of feedback on things. Again, trying to make higher tier stuff a little bit more accessible. 
uh making slowing down creeping a little bit just to make less focus on those early game units i'm with them uh i do think the, the game pace was I, I did enjoy the game pace how uh last game last patch i just the, the focus on early game units was a little bit too strong so we're gonna have to see i i do like being able to fast expand though uh i just think the game feels a little slow in like from four to six minutes right now um but I think it might be also just running into a lot of people turtling because they can do because uh, I play Infernals and Vanguard and Celestial Lake games are so much stronger that it doesn't make sense for them to play on the map when they can turtle in Helicarrier or Animancer Saber and be fine. They don't have to really contest until tier two. So we'll see. Um, we talked about this economy being able to actually defend a little bit better. Uh, I think this is a little bit too strong. We'll see. We'll see. Scout nerfed. Yes. Yes. Scout nerfed. Uh... Maybe, maybe over nerfed, but please, like just removing that for, for a patch. Oh, feels so good. Lanches are more of a solution. But yeah, yeah, the big thing there is that it actually, there's there's some interesting counterplay. Gaunts can kill Lancers, Lancers can kill Gaunts. It's not just, oh, I have Gaunts, you have Lancers. I got to run away, but I can't run away because Gaunt, Lancers are faster. It actually makes things a little happier. They do more damage, yeah, but they they are much less tanky. So you, get, you, can, actually, you can actually kill them. I think the Exoball is still a little bit too strong. I think the Exo is still a little bit too core. But we'll see. Uh, I and again, I do think System Shock should be should be messed around with a little bit more. What else is interesting about this? Yeah, Hornets, uh, Nerf and Prisms. As I was saying, I think the 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 lock the shutdown here is the big thing. The ability to go and make sure that your opponent doesn't have top bar abilities. That's the big advantage. Also, killing bases sure fine. Sticky bombs nice, but shutting down top bar before a fight. That's the that's the big thing. I'll carry strong. Uh, anything interesting from this stuff? I, yeah, sure, 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 monk. Make it so the gods are on trial. I've, I've, I've talked about this at length. And yeah, you can do stuff with harbingers, but uh, no, 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 not worth it. Yeah, seventy-five to thirty-eight percent. There we go. I mean, yeah, I think this was true against Gree. It also means that Magvanons are not quite as oppressive in the Infernal versus Infernal matchup. You couple this with the, uh, couple this with Weavers actually being usable now, and I've seen a lot of like Gaunt Weaver. Uh, Weaver Magmadon, uh, because then you go, you just abduct them, you stun, it, 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 it makes a lot of sense. Um, and there's more build, there's more, uh, there's more build diversity. There's more composition diversity in IVI now, which is, oh, it's so great. Yes. Thank you. Weavers are, are reasonable now. They're not, they're not, they're not OP. They're just good. And I like that. They're, they're, they're where they need to be. Uh, again, I think this might be a little bit too much, but fair enough. I know Vanguard players were very unhappy, about just not being able to fight under Miasma. Hella, ah, 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 Spriggan's intended to counter Hella carriers. What do we need? 40 to kill one? Ah, this is not a thing. Not a thing. Absolutely not a thing. Not a thing. Recall to be more viable. Uh, at the same time, Sabres to be more accessible. Yeah, sure. Uh, just making, making upgrades a little bit more accessible. I like that in general. Making the, the, the letting players make more decisions on how they're going to play a little bit earlier into the game. I, I do like that. Um, but yeah, this, this idea, by the way, is just, again, making making sure the Argents can creep properly um, and they can skirmish a little bit more. So, and you can actually go Kree as well. So, that's nice. And I, I was this actually in the balance pass list? Maybe I scroll over it. Thank goodness. Uh, I, I would rather see this stay at 50% and move this to like 15 seconds. So, the idea here was uh, Cabal Debilitate lasting 40 seconds was way too long. Sure, very true. Uh, but I, I think still the, the, the heavy debuff for a short amount of time, I much prefer that over a minimal debuff, minimal debuff for like a medium amount of time. So make it last like five to 10 seconds and still be 50%. I, I think that's pretty reasonable. It gives you the chance to catch, but it's not, you know, lasting three fights, which is what it was doing previously. Uh, uh, yeah. Strong counter debilitate. You got system shock. What, what does infernal players have? What, what do we have to counter debilitate? We don't. But yeah, making making these slow units just a little bit faster. I think it does help out quite a bit. Um, Archangels are more reasonable. Uh, and also Isla Dreads a little bit better. Uh, uh, yeah, Jack and Miles resolve. So at the end of the day, I think these the patch is really good. I think Celestials are probably going to be the leading race in 0.1.0. I think they just have more tools, better tools than everyone else. Vanguard, I think, is going to be s still better than Infernals. I think our mid game is a little bit better. Late game is technically better, but not really. And the economy of Vanguard means that Vanguard gets to that late game that much faster. So late game Infernal versus Vanguard versus Celestials feels kind of bad right now. Uh, it's going to need another patch or two, I think, hopefully to resolve it. 
I think Celestials I but in general I think the patch is great and on top of that the game is a lot prettier it I, you know I didn't really care about the graphics but it is a big improvement I'm very happy with that on top of everything else that happened Furious Resolve is a better map than Jagged Maw so very excited about that one as well but that's my take on the patch buffs nerfs changes all together I'm excited to play more of it I'll be streaming later this evening and uh trying to get some show some show matches on the new patch organized for like Sunday we'll see if I can get that that figured out but for now uh those are my thoughts on the patch where am I right where am I wrong do you agree with me do you disagree let me know in the comments down below and even if you don't have anything to say drop an emoji so say something it does help out with the algorithm quite a bit and if you want more Stormy Aid content I'm finishing up all the stuff from Stormy and Nexus. Those VODs are getting posted. I'll be casting more stuff. Tanks are going to be starting up again soon. Uh, you should go and make sure to follow this channel go, or sub to this channel on YouTube. Go follow me on Twitch because all the stuff is going to be there. And I will see you next time.